Mouseworks fans and welcome to another edition of Model News Around the World. Sorry I haven't been uh, doing any lately. Um, had some medical issues with my hand. Um, haven't been able to model. Um, trying to get some surgery so I won't be able to model even longer. So, But I figured I'd give you guys an update uh, on what's going on. Um, one of the things I did uh, get in, uh, not, not a lot of news going around, so I'll uh, show you some a package I got in from Japan today. Uh, the other thing is, um, only other news is that Tamiya, which is kind of interesting, you can Google it or uh, put it on YouTube, uh, they celebrated their first delivery of or loading of a package of 2020. And they make it, I guess it's a Japanese business thing, but they made a big ceremony about the first box of materials that goes out on a truck from 2020. And they had a big to-do and uh, had one of the guys walk the box into the truck and then big celebration. So very interesting, uh, something very different than what the businesses do in the United States. And it's uh, actually kind of nice to know that they really uh, are into the good luck type uh, idea of business and uh, actually celebrate uh, their business. So interesting to watch. You might. Uh, try to search it on YouTube. Anyways, um, let's get to the box of goodies that came in from Japan. All right, so here's the box, came in from uh, Hobby Link Japan. Um, they're very quick at delivery, um, kind of expensive on shipping, but it is from overseas, so it's to be expected. But uh, nicely packaged as always, and uh, pretty quick. So let's pop it open and see what we got. Fresh off the shores of Japan. All right, a couple things I ordered a little while back, and some things I just got in. So I'll take out all the bubble wrap. Oh, there we go. Okay. So first thing out of the box is an Aoshima. Uh, Starion, a uh, car that uh, when I was in a uh, little past high school, uh, when I was getting my first car, this was one of the vehicles I really wanted. Uh, was, they were hard to get. They are uh, considered a sports car, and this one was a racing version of it. So really excited about that, and we'll do a review of that kit as well. <clears throat> Next thing, my apron is looking pretty shabby. So they had a Mr. Hobby uh, apron, and so I just picked that up for a pretty good price. Looks pretty nice. Let's try that on. And the big one is this monster, which I wasn't sure if I was going to even get. Um, I wasn't sure how they were going to distribute it. Some uh, some models anymore, the distribution's a really problem, and uh, you won't see the kit, at least for a long, long time in the United States. So I went ahead and ordered this from Japan. Then, of course, it shows up in the United States. But anyways, uh, this is a... Uh, Kind of like a Maz truck with the the kind of the Scud missile truck, but they've changed it into a fire truck. So very interesting for uh, uh, airport firefighting with the big cannon on it and all that good stuff. So uh, waited for this one for a while. It's going to be kind of a neat build. It's going to be a big build, and we'll take a look at it today and uh, show you what's in the box. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody, and uh, let's get these things started. All right, Mouseworks fans, time for a uh, issue of the new kit releases, uh, feature kit releases, I should say. And for this, uh, way behind, but uh, one of the big announcements is ICM has released their catalog online, and it looks like they've got a lot of stuff coming. They're really coming on strong. They've got some nice kits, and people are buying them uh, quite a bit, so they're getting some money to do some of these new tools. So um, that'll be m the main uh, subject of the future kit releases. So let me get on my specs and uh, give you some of the information here. So uh, first up, ICM is doing a 1 24th scale Benz Patton motor wagon from 1886. 
and this looks really really interesting nobody i don't believe has ever done this before um, because of the big spoked wheels and so forth uh, trying to make a kit of it would be very very difficult uh, this one it would be interesting if they did it in a larger scale but this is again 25th or 24th i believe and uh I don't know if the spokes are going to be photo etched or if they'll be a real micro fine plastic or how they're going to do it, but it's going to be a very interesting subject. And they're doing two versions: one is the vehicle, and then the second is the vehicle with um, Miss uh, uh, Benz, I guess, uh, and the sons uh, figurines that go on the. Uh, she goes on the vehicle, and they're on the side standing. So it'll be interesting to get them with the figures and see how well they do the figures. They've done a pretty good job at doing. Uh, sculpts so uh, next up ICM is doing a 35th scale uh, bear with me an AC 40 137 a Soviet fire truck uh, this is a uh, fairly modern version of a fire truck uh, the uh, uh, vehicle is used quite a bit on all kinds of other types of uh, trucks like pickups and uh, Troop transports, things like that. So this will be a pretty interesting one. Looks like they're going to be kind of concentrating on fire trucks, them and some other companies this year. So that's pretty neat. So if you're into fire trucks, you're in seventh heaven. Next one is a uh, 35th scale T34 Tiagach. Tiagach. Anyways, that's uh, you'll see it up there. Um, it's a 1944 uh, T34 recovery vehicle. I thought about building one of these just from scratch, and uh, it's a fairly simple uh, build, but there are some parts that I'd have to manufacture, so now I don't have to do that. This kit should have everything ready to go, so that'll be kind of neat. Uh, the next one up is uh, they're going to do a couple variants of the 148 scale 826 uh, bomber, and they showed three versions so far. Um, the interesting thing about this, they should be pretty detailed it's the uh, uh they'll have three versions of it they should be pretty detailed um i believe by this time this video comes out they should already have one on the market so uh what's interesting too is uh, Hob uh hobby boss is coming out with they've announced a 30 second scale version of this i can't remember exactly what version which is the glass nose or the gun nose but that'll be pretty interesting too so uh, and the next one is a 148 scale he 111z zwilling the double aircraft tow tug for the gigant glider uh, this is going to be a big model <laughs> they have a a very nice model of the uh, single uh, he 111s um, what's interesting is they did do a new tool of it even though the revel slash monogram one out there in 48 scale is pretty good i thought this was going to be a rebox of that but uh revel has actually boxing the ICM version instead of reboxing their own version so that's kind of weird but it's a nice kit it goes together uh, pretty well from what I've heard so next one last one is 132nd scale uh, PT-17 and uh, also a PT-13 trainer uh, this is something that I just can't understand why they haven't done this before in 32nd scale uh, one of the basic trainers the United States had for years and years and years used a few for male uh, delivery and so forth so this will be very welcome after a long time and it should be a really nice kit uh, based on their uh, Gloucester Gladiator uh, that they came out with just recently so anyways that's about it for uh, the ICM update and uh, future kit releases and next up is going to be the uh, new kit review All right, time for a new kit review. As you saw in the beginning of the news program, uh, I got this just from Japan. It is the Aoshima, which uh, they call themselves B-Max um, for certain versions of cars. So I'm not sure exactly if they're two separate companies or what the deal is between B-Max and Aoshima. But if you see a B-Max and you're not sure about their quality, it is Aoshima. And this is the Mitsubishi Starion GRA uh, 90, or sorry, 87 uh, version. It's got a two-in-one decal selection and uh, great box art. Just love that box art. Love this vehicle. Uh, looking at the side, looks like they have the same version of the STP as on the box front. And there's the other version. Has a little gray and red instead of the blue and red 
on there with the big rally art logos and stuff on it and uh, shows you some uh, extra little part kits that they are going to have for it, a photo etch kit and uh, a few detail upsets. So let's take a look and see what's inside the box. Okay, first out of the box is the body and uh, should be a new mold as far as I know. And that is looking really sharp. You can kind of see the panel lines, door lines there are nice and deep and they're nice and square so they're not soft at all. A lot of detail in the uh, door handle, even the little door lock is in there. Uh, I don't see a lot of mold lines that you have to sand off. They actually put them on certain sides that uh, aren't going to show. So you shouldn't have a whole lot of cleanup. Uh, very sharp detail, very, very clean indeed. And uh, yeah, shouldn't need any cleanup hardly at all. So looking pretty good. Okay, next up, let's go to the instructions. And falls out a addendum to doing the mirrors and so forth. Um, so they just have a little extra parts <coughs> thing there. Okay, black and white instructions. There's the color, two color sheets. Very nicely done. I mean, really nicely done. Definitely worth keeping. Um, showing all the decal placement and so forth on both versions. That one and the different version there. Okay, and the instructions are, now here's some of that BMAX stuff. Um, kind of interesting how, I don't know if it's a division of Aoshima or what. Anyways, there they're actually showing body paint instructions. Um, for body color, they actually show you a really good diagram there, real clean. Um, <clears throat> looks like they do give you uh, half an engine there, so it gives you a little bit of detail. Uh, suspension looks pretty good. Pretty clean on the details. You do have to do out some holes, so apparently there's probably another version of this coming out. All right, brake uh, rotor discs there. All the interior detail, lots of de detail, and they did show, uh, and actually it looks like it might have some photo etched in there. That's really interesting, that right there. But they did do the actual uh, racing version with the uh, not you know, very sparse detail uh, with just the racing seat. Um, does show some harnesses and stuff here, photo etched, that might be for the upgrade set. We'll have to see if it's actually in the kit, I don't think it's in the kit. Um, then the roll cage, uh, looks like everything's pretty simple on that. Um, interesting how they are more drilling. <laughs> so this actually is not a really a beginner kit. This one's actually going to be quite advanced, especially if you buy that photo etch set. Rear taillights and so forth, more photo etched extra detail set. I'll have to look into that and see if that's something I want to do. Um, radiator. Uh, has photo etching you can put on that. Uh, okay, and then it gives you a parts breakdown of what comes in it. And it does not look like photo etch is there, so that is obviously an upgrade. So, okay, now for these next pieces, I'm going to have to remove this because they're black and you won't see them. Well, first up is uh, Sprue C, looks like, or what the heck sprue is that? I uh, can't hardly even read it. I wish they would do the, something about that. Uh, have it bigger or have, you know, something else. Anyways, there's the dashboard. Again, really crisp. I'll get some close-ups, hopefully, of that. Uh, fuel tanks even in there. Uh, exhaust pipes are slide molded, so they're actually hollow. Which is really nice. Suspension looks really nice and clean. I wish some of these American companies, uh, AMT and so forth, would take a lesson from these guys and redo at least their shock sit sets in their model car kits. Because uh, they're pretty bad. And uh, there's the wipers. Looks good. Okay, next is the chassis. Um, couple sink marks, but nothing to be concerned about being on the bottom of the chassis. All one molded piece, so kind of be expected on a bigger piece to have sink marks. Looks pretty good. Okay, next is the clear parts. 
and there's the big rear windshield that's the angular windshield that's the thing that makes a star on a star on very cool very very cool and rear tail lights and they're actually kind of frosted already for you so all you gotta do is paint them you don't have to do any type of backing to them it'll look like the real lights and then that is the front windshield crystal crystal clear okay next up um, looks like this has got the transmission and the bo engine bottom um, the racing seat which is already cut out with the uh, holes for the harness which is really nice a lot of companies don't do that and they I don't know if they expect you to do it or what but uh, it's not too hard to do that so um, roll cage brake discs kit looks to be fairly simple and straightforward next up's uh, the chrome rear end um, so actually the chrome will look like a reflection through those frosted pla uh, clear okay here is the chassis pan and really sharp details again I mean just unbelievable how how sharp these things are getting I mean it's going to be like some of the Gundam kits where they're not soft at all which is a big change from the model car kits out there a lot of them are just so i don't know they're just not very well done and then here's even a panel with a scribe panel line bolt heads for the rear uh, compartment there and then the side pieces with little door handles and even a little window uh, roller there uh, some of the cross braces and stuff really well done. I mean little bolts with nuts. I mean or washers I should say washers and nuts. It's flange stuff. That's just crazy This one's gonna be a lot of fun a lot of detail right out of the box Okay. Next up is the tires not much. I won't take them out of the bag because there's not much going there. They're slicks They do have a little overrun here, so I'll have to cut that out is never any fun when you're trying to do it with vinyl rubber it doesn't cut very well unless you have an extremely sharp knife and i'm an extremely sharp knife um does look like the wheels i mean they're pretty they're pretty good they're, again there's some slag on the outside so i'm gonna have to take a uh, green one of those green uh whatever you call them the bright boys and rub that off that's how you get that stuff off okay now going back to some of the white parts there's the bumper faces those look pretty good nice and crisp and nice and sharp corners there's the front bumper system there headlights and all that good stuff there's the hood uh, even has little hood pins molded in there very cool nicely done And the rims, um, these actually look really pretty nice detail-wise. With all the, the spaces are open, the chrome did not uh, cover those up. Um, I don't know if I'd leave them chrome. I might just strip them and then paint them in aluminum to make them look like polished uh, aluminum, because that's a little bright. Just throw them in some purple power, and next day you scrub that stuff off, and you're ready to go. Okay, decals. Very nicely done really nice colors there's some of those pieces i thought you had to paint them but actually they're decals um, for the molding and so forth on the windshield so um, let's take a closer look at that let's see if i can get them open easily those resealable bags okay. a picture of that wow that's incredible i mean that rally art symbol is just awesome i mean awesome nice colors they don't look transparent at all even the white looks very opaque so if you put these over the colors you shouldn't have any bleed through um cool they made them really thick that's that cost the company a lot of money to make really good decals like that and i really appreciate that they do that kind of thing so and that is about it for that vehicle and that review uh tell me what you think um i would like to also put a question out Star, uh, Mitsubishi used to make a uh, Starion that had a straight back. Um, I saw it at an auto dealership back in the 80s, and it basically came back here and had like a camper back. And I think it was called a Starion uh, uh, 
long back or something like that but i've never been able to find it on the internet i don't know if it was a custom uh the dealer told me that it was just a limited edition that they did but it was uh uh long back or or star back or something like that anyways um had a little thing like a you know an old camino or something cover so if you've ever heard of that or had any pictures of that let me know um, otherwise we will move on to the next segment All right, Mouseworks fans, uh, time for uh, a new uh, modeling technique. And something I'm going to show you is something I've been working on recently. And this is for a T55 uh, dozer unit. <coughs> and the Czechless Slovakians, what they did is they actually attached um, these little things. This is the Sponson uh, to the T55. They added these standoffs so you can actually bolt stuff into them. Some of the standoffs were already there from Russia. The Russian production and just the standard production in Czechoslovakia but they added some more and what they are you can kind of see here they're very very tiny but what I've done is uh, the real ones are a post that has a th is threaded and let me show you a picture of what the real one looks like okay this is kind of a sideways view but this is one of the books I have on the vehicle and you can see that this is actually just a post that they've welded to the sponson and you can see there's threads actually in there right there and then this uh, little piece here is just a little guide piece here. So anyways, the uh, this is going to be something that's pronounced all over the vehicle because nothing's attached to them, so they stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, very small, but they need to be done. And I was having problems if you try to cut a piece of tubing and just glue it on, trying to cut the tubing the same length all the time and straight, it's almost impossible. So I will show you how I did that. It's actually kind of a neat little trick. Okay, so for this... Uh, these little things that right here um, I actually use I have this stuff here this is a micro tubing brass tubing from k and um, it is uh, get this side on it here so they're special shapes it's 132nd and it's got a 0 0.006 wall so it's a really really tiny wall and uh, very difficult to deal with because it's very very uh, touchy I um, mean you can see how small it is but it is actually a hollow tube so I'll show you how I deal with that so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take a little bit of it and I need to cut a piece off longer than the piece that the height of the uh, tube on the vehicle take a very sharp exacto knife with a new blade basically and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it where I want to cut it and I don't push down on it because it'll just crimp it so being so small and delicate so what I do is I lightly cut a line into it and I roll it back and forth and I don't push very hard and this will just start making a groove and then it'll start cutting through like a pipe cutter but just on a microscopic level and eventually it'll just cut itself through uh, like I said don't rush it it'll cut itself and cut clean without crushing the actual pipe itself there we go so you kind of see right there I mean, you can see how small it is but it is hollow um, so cut off clean and we'll go to the next step which is to take this little piece of plastic here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole now this is a uh, uh, 69 uh, number drill bit which is the same size as this pipe and I'm just going to drill a hole completely and all the way through the plastic and I'm going to clean it out a little bit okay so now that I've got that on there make sure I don't have any burrs or anything on it and I'm going to take the tubing and I'm going to actually push it through we'll be able to see this push it through the hole it'll be a tight fit 
because it's exactly the same size but you can see I have threaded it through and I want it to be quite a bit higher than what uh, the actual height of the uh, standoff is okay now I'm going to take my super glue and this is really really thin super glue uh, by this Hobby Lobby I found out it looks like it's kind of junky but it's actually their house brand and it's very 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 good stuff so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of wire and I'm going to super glue the bottom what would be the bottom of the uh, sponson and I'm going to place super glue around it and you don't have to be too neat about this you can actually put a fairly big blob on there but this will flow in and then if there's any gaps of where you took the drill bit and made the hole it'll fill that gap so we will get that glued on there and I'm going to take a little bit of accelerator and accelerate that and should be ready to do the next step once that dries okay now that I've got that dry this is the side that is actually going to be the standoff I'm going to use a uh, file about a 280 grit and I'm just going to file this down I don't want to clip it because it'll crush it again um, but I'm just going to file this very lightly let the file do the the cutting and being brass it'll uh, sand down quite quickly you can see it's actually opened up the hole where it was uh, from cutting it there was a little bit of burrs so basically I'm just going to keep on sanding this until it is the uh, height that I want and uh, then we'll go to the next step okay now that I've got that down to the height that I want right there uh, that's <clears throat> one note uh, you can do this with any size tubing I mean I'm just doing it on the real small to show you how small it can be um, so now what the next thing I'm going to do is to actually cut off the other side here if it was a sponsor and if it was going inside something it didn't wouldn't really matter of course um, of the model but this these are actually very sharp sprue cutters but uh, I'm just going to cut it off side so and then once that's done you can take a either moto tool or sanding stick and just clean off and level the end just make sure you stop every so often because this can heat up the, the metal quite a bit and then melt the plastic and then it'll move on you there we go now it's all flush with the bottom you can fill it if you want but you won't see it from a side view and uh, so there we go there is your tiny little standoff there now if you want it if for some reason when you sanded it it got a little bit of burr inside you can actually take a knife and you can clean it out it's really small it's hard to do and this you can actually do this to to thin the wall as well so there we go so there we go there's a little standoff and this one actually the glue let loose when I sanded it I must have got it a little hot and it let loose but I'll just re-glue it but uh, anyways that's that's all there is to that technique Alrighty, Mouseworks fans, uh, time for new gear, and for this week, my new gear is uh, something I found um, online and uh, looked pretty interesting. Basically, it's a uh, different type of knife system uh, for, originally they were uh, marketing it towards surgeons, but uh, they're doing it for the craft industry now, but it's called Pen Blade. Uh, interesting handle, that's what kind of attracted me to it. It has uh, a little ruler on the side here. Um, it also has this number 15 which is actually the type of blade they have three different kinds of blades that you can use in these things and this particular one's the, the 15 and what's really interesting about it is it actually has this little piece right here to actually extend the blade so you press that in it clicks into place and there's your blade 
And this particular one I was interested in being a curved blade because I, when I do my photo etch uh, cutting, I use a curved blade that works like a guillotine, makes it work much better than a flat or a, a regular X-Acto type blade, the number 11s. So um, I've already had one, uh, a tool similar to that, this one here. And this one actually worked pretty good, but this one is actually a surgical blade, and so it is actually a lot sharper and a lot uh, stronger. So, um, very impressed with the way it works. Didn't know it was it was cheap. It was only like five dollars for this thing. So I will show you how it works here. We will take off a piece of photo etched here, and uh, let's get a tight shot of that. Okay, there we go. And so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to rock, get it as close to possible. I put it between the groove and then I push it towards the piece I want. And then I'm just going to rock it back and you hear it snap. And we're going to do this side here. Snap that. This one here. It's also nice that it's narrow so you can get in certain areas of the photo etch fret. Okay. Okay. There we go. Oh, that one didn't go through all the, quite the way. It made a snapping noise, but it didn't go through all the way. There we go. But uh, cuts it real clean. You can see there's barely a nib on there, but I'll sand that down with uh, some sandpaper. But uh, very impressed with that. And then once you're done, the other nice thing is, once you're done with this, uh, using it, uh, basically, show you here, you just hit that little, press that little button there, and retracts. So you don't have a blade sitting out there getting damaged and everything. Um, also works, the blade is actually inside there. You can actually cut rope and things like that by putting it actually in there. See if I can get it in there and it will actually cut the rope down in there you just pull it across there and, and it cuts it without it actually being exposed so it's got a lot of purposes I'm really impressed with this so uh, might be a little hard to find the number 15 surgical blades but uh, uh, I won't use this that often I won't need to replace it that often but this old one is uh, going by the wayside be used enough for something else so again thanks for watching and uh, Appreciate all the support, and as always, I have uh, stuff on my Mouseworks website. Um, this is a pack of the Prop Wash, which is a uh, anti-static cleaner for plastic. I'm going to use this on that Starion when I paint it. Just wipe it down once I'm ready to paint. It'll make it anti-static and clean all the fingerprints off. Uh, leaves it anti-static long enough to get the paint on it and uh, without any dust or specks of uh, uh, dust and dirt. So, Anyways, uh, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be alerted to all my new videos. And thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Thanks for all the support and keep on building.